are continuing to install our green little dinosaur Volvo Penta MD2B. The cuts were not perfect, so some wedges were required to fill in the gaps so that the end result would be a somewhat smooth surface. The construction required help from our neighbors Adair and Noel, who lent us their heavy-duty Bosch Turbo Mode Sander. That was going to be the only tool appropriate for smoothing down the edges of the scrap hardwood that we used to build the stands. We wanted the edges to be smooth for better fiberglass application. I'm not sure what our aversion to wearing gloves and face masks while epoxying is. I just think we're done with fiberglassing. I use the multi-tool to cut off the jagged fiberglass edges and create a smooth space even beneath the awkward wooden overhang. Sending. Between the layers of fiberglass, we dropped the engine back in with the halyard to check that everything was fitting nicely. So now more layers of fiberglass, for three layers in total, and about four layers where the engine stands actually sit. And now it's time to paint. We have been trying to get uh, our boat changed from uh, a steering system, like our wheel, to a bar, a tiller. And it's been really difficult to get the pieces done, so we finally decided just to make a mock-up that we can uh, show the mechanic uh, how to make it. Basically, this is a copy of what we would like to get done on a stainless steel. And uh, we contacted a guy and he's going to give us a quote. So we're going to get that done like that. This, this aluminium piece is going to come off. And there's going to be a G10 base with a raised circle where a bearing fits in. It's going to be a 6 mil, roughly 2.5 inch stainless steel bar coming up. And this is going to fit on top of it. It's going to have three bolts at the back to clamp everything and the one bolt up front for a tiller. So the tiller can move back and forward. That, that's going to spin like this. You know, you're measuring the height of the shaft from the connection till sticks out from here. So we want to get the height exactly to the top of this lid. So you want me to climb in and measure up. So I'll have to climb down in there to hold um, it. You can kind of get it. I'll just do it. White gold. We had to find a guy who can make us a solid stainless steel shaft and an attachment that we can attach a, a tiller to. There's not many places, not many shops in Mexico that sell solid stainless steel bar. So this guy was professional and he even asked me what grade of stainless I wanted, which was, I was like, ooh, I get to choose. <laughs> and uh, yes, I think he fundamentally understands what I need. I need. Because the, there's no way he's gonna come to the boat. So just to let, for everybody to understand. It's almost a two hour drive there, it's a two hour, it's like, it took me four hours to drive there and back. Yeah, so it's hard to get the metal worker to to understand what we're doing just because we're so far away. Even if you have photographs, it's yeah. hard to create something out of nothing. Especially like precision stainless steel, when you need like stuff that are precision to the millimeter, it's it's kind of like. And this is going to be a lot of our money. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see how much they, they decide to take us for a ride. 
I'm not trying to like implicate that uh, we're going to be taken for a ride or anything like that. I'm just saying the nature of metalwork here seems to be that it's super expensive. Metalwork, plastic, or any material that we don't have already on board on the boat. So we were quoted for plexiglass type materials recently and they were surprisingly expensive. It's just not available. So and it makes it expensive. Right size. And yeah, and thickness. So I wouldn't recommend making stainless steel structures here. Yeah. Now that we have a proper caliper, now we're gonna do the actual <laughs> measuring after we've gotten the coupler. We're gonna have to get a new coupler. We had originally measured 31 mil. We lifted the engine again now that the paint has dried. It's time to very carefully drill and screw in the engine mounts. Now when we fitted the engine last, we were able to line up the entire thing perfectly with the shaft. So my recommendation would be to install the very same mounts on the exact same spots when the engine was all lined up. We didn't do that for some reason, which would cause some issues as you'll see in a moment. Since our measurements were not perfect and the holes for the screws would be extremely close to the edge of the wooden fiberglass, I wanted to test out which drill bit would be the best for making holes that are not too large and not so small that the wood will crack. We poured a little bit of epoxy into the holes before bolting it all down to help seal the wood from water or oil from the engine. Of course, because we didn't put the exact same mounts in the exact same spots as when we aligned the engine, we had a hell of a time dropping the engine onto the mount studs. But in the end, with much grunting and groaning, the shaft lined up again. There was a hummingbird nested outside of the gate to the busy port entrance where we live. The way that I feel about our boat projects... There's some metaphor somewhere in there. As we install the engine, in the meantime, catching fish for dinner and playing out on the ocean is imperative. Our patron, Heriberto's boat, handles the bumpy seas well, tracks splendidly and cruises in through the tricky Puerto Aventuras marina entrance without a hitch. This little tuna here is bonito, which is really good to eat actually. It's a little tummy and we're going to butterfly it for choco. Butterfly? Yeah. And why butterfly something? Because it's the easiest way to remove the, the fillets from a tuna. Groupers have lots of uh, meat on the head. While this fish, all the meat is on the body. Poor, my poor babies are waiting. Look at them, they're already down there. Hello, babies. Where are the snappers? Not right here, so we can get to see a bit better. And there's a little baby barracuda. I've caught it three times already, that one. Look at all these fish coming. Don't waste that fish.
tune in again for the next video where I take a quick trip to the States. I haven't gone on an airplane in a million years. I try to get vaccinated, attempt to pick up some engine parts for a boat from viewers of this channel, and attend the 2021 Annapolis Sailboat Show. If you couldn't make it out to the show yourself, or you didn't necessarily want to brave the crowds, you're gonna wanna come along for this ride. Thanks for watching.